Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Being a carer with Kess. My name is Kessiana Akwara Ati and I'm a health and social care trainer. Welcome to 2022. I do hope and pray that this year is a most rewarding one for us all. And I also want to say a big thank you to every single one of you who have liked, subscribed, or commented on the videos. Thank you so much. My heart out to you all. Thank you so much. And for those who are watching for the first time, please like, share, and subscribe as we get on with today's topic. Now, the topic for today, we're talking about the qualities of a good carer part one. Now, in my intro video, I did say a carer or being a carer is not just a job. It is a calling or what some of you would like to call a ministry. It's either you have it or you don't have it. There are no midfielders in this job or on this job. It's for a special kind of people because it entails a lot. And therefore, these qualities come in very handy. And they make the carer exceptional and they help him or her excel on the job. Now, the first one here is intentionality. You must be intentional. You must be intentionally warm. You must be intentionally inviting. You must be intentionally friendly. You might not be a friendly person outside the workplace, like people like myself, but on the job, you have to be intentionally friendly because your friendliness just might be a lifesaver to someone who needs it. So also with your warmth. So it goes without saying, therefore, that you must be intentional. Your intentionality must be obvious, particularly to the clients, your clients. You must also be patient. Now, don't get me wrong. Patience is a lovely name. And patience also is a virtue. <laughs> but you see, on this job, patience is key. Why do you say? Or would you want to ask? There are people you will come across who might be difficult, who might be stubborn. But you see, when you are patient, it wouldn't bother you. You'll be able to go back to work the next day. And you see, when you are patient as well, or if you say to me, oh, I'm so patient and all of that. Okay, but trust me. That patience will be put through the fire and would we'll see if you come out as ashes or as fine gold. Next up, you must have a passion for the job. The passion, your passion for the job makes you wake up in the morning and the first thing you think about are those you have to care for. Your passion will make you go to bed and you're like, okay, I've done this today. I need to improve on what I've done. I make it better for this people tomorrow. Your passion drives you. Your passion. And your passion would make you, when we will say to you, oh, for instance, I'm going to use myself. Kes, we have Jane. She just did this. She just did that. She needs care. She needs, you know, to be cleaned and everything. My passion for the job, will, even if it was time for my break, I would say, okay, I'll leave the break for now. I'm going to give Jen 10, 15, 20 minutes of my time. I think I can go on my break later. But for some of us, we say, oh, I love my job. I have passion for my job. But when you are needed, you are quick to say, oh, I need to go for a break. Oh, I need to go for this. I need to go for that. Why is it always when you are needed? That you realize that you need to go for a break. Also, you need to have a de desire to learn. To develop yourself. Now, I say to all my carers, or all the carers that come to my training sessions, that listen, 
Even if your boss, your manager do not want to send you on a training, you improve on yourself. Develop yourself. Why? You might ask. When preparation meets opportunity, trust me, it is a beautiful marriage. What do I mean? When you develop yourself, take for instance, you work with people with dementia. You go on to learn what dementia is. You learn the causes, the symptoms. And then somebody is told that you are a carer and they walk up to you and they say to you, hello, I hear you are a carer. Can you tell me what you do, what your job entails? And the people you work with on a daily basis. Oh, and you be proud to say, yes, I am a carer. And then you intelligently tell them what the job you do entails. He or she could say to you, hey, I like your train of thought. I have this care home or I'm, in opening, or I'm opening a care home and I would like you to be a manager. Yes, you may not have the qualification to do that, but I am happy to train you because I love your personality. I love your positivity. I love the vibes you bring. Hello. Now imagine what it would be if you are asked to talk about what you do and you're like, oh, um, I just do personal care. I feed them. Yeah, and I think that's about it. What does that mean? You just missed an opportunity. Also, you must have empathy. What does that mean? Put yourself in their place. Now, the good book says, Treat others the way you would like them to treat you. That should be at the back of our minds all the time. Because you see, nobody knows what, is, what will happen tomorrow. Only the big man upstairs. He knows. So let us be give our best. And also remember, in case you haven't really thought about it, that they pay your wages. Without people to care for in the community, it doesn't matter if they have epilepsy, autism, dementia, mental illness, whatever it is they might have, they pay our salaries. And also pay my salary. Because without them, we don't have jobs. You must also um, have a sense of humor because you need it. You need to be able to laugh at yourself. You need to be able to crack jokes. I know some of you might say, oh, I wasn't employed to be a clown or a jester. I know. But you see, you're being able to laugh away everything. Because the truth is that you, you, might, get, you, might, you might get to be told things you don't like. And if you're one who gets angry quickly, then there's a problem. So you must have, to have a sense of humor. Laugh it off. Laugh it off. And if I may add, <laughs> the people who work with, they don't really take it that serious. So don't be too serious about yourself. Have fun. Have fun. At the same time, do your job. You must also be attentive. People that work in the community, sometimes um, you are the only one the clients see throughout the day, sometimes throughout the week, as sad as it may sound. And so you see, they need you to listen. They want to talk to someone. And so when you are listening, you must be attentive and be attentive actively, not passively. Yes, I know you have other people to care for. You have places to go to, care notes to sign and to fill in. I understand. But please make our time to listen. Yes, they might repeat themselves and repeat themselves and repeat themselves. It doesn't matter. That is where they are at. Our job is to listen. Listen actively. Contribute where needed. Smile. Smile. Make them feel like they matter. Because trust me, they do. 
always remember that you are the ray of sunshine they see. You are their source of, will I say, what now, encouragement. Let's not forget that. Have I scared you? Hope not. <laughs> it's a beautiful job. Trust me. And so in my next video, I'll be talking about qualities of a good carer part two. So don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. And always know this and remember that no matter what the matter is, you matter so much more. Until my next video where we're talking about quality of a good carer, do, do like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Thank you and see you in my next video.